The Peace Corps sends volunteers on two-year stints overseas, where they provide aid to needy nations and serve as goodwill ambassadors for our country. Volunteers of any age can apply, and many seniors have devoted their time and energy to the Peace Corps to make our world a better place. Let's see what they've been doing. I have today signed an executive order providing for the establishment of a Peace Corps on a temporary pilot basis. This corps will be a pool of trained men and women sent overseas by the United States government or through private institutions and organizations to help foreign countries meet their urgent needs for skilled manpower. In 1961, President Kennedy sent the first Peace Corps volunteers into action. Their mission was to serve America in the cause of peace by living and working in developing nations. Over 5,000 young people applied to join the first wave. Today, the Corps contains many seniors as well. Whether drawn by a sense of adventure or duty to serve, the men and women who join the Corps are in for a life-changing experience. My first assignment with Peace Corps was in the middle 60s, and I was assigned to Bhubaneswar, Orissa, India. And I was assigned to a women's rural training center where they would bring the ladies in from the villages. India was a very segregated country, and women were treated totally different. There was a, a woman's line at the post office, a woman's line at the train station. It was a, a real eye-opener. Kathy Mueller's experience in India was shaped by the people she met. As it turned out, one of her greatest influences was an American. I had been there approximately nine months by myself. I was the only volunteer in the whole state, and I heard this group was coming. Uh, so I met the train. And I got off the train. It was an old, um, an old steam engine. And there he was. And he was so handsome. And it just, just very dashing. Then I met Kathy. And <laughs> later on, we became <laughs> husband and wife. But that's, uh, meeting the train was a good, good thing. To date, 182,000 people have served in the Peace Corps in 138 countries. Over 7,000 are now in the field, a 30-year high. Anne-Marie Emmett joined the Corps in 2002 at the age of 72. And then I had always been interested in Peace Corps. I'd had a niece that served in the Peace Corps. And I thought, I don't have, I didn't at that time have any idea if I qualified. I didn't know if they took older people. But I thought I would try, so I went on the website and didn't see anything that said no. In fact, any U.S. citizen over the age of 18 can apply to serve in the Peace Corps. There are roughly 450 Peace Corps volunteers now serving who are over the age of 50. You don't have to speak a foreign language when you sign up, and a college degree is not required. And in February of 2002, I got the phone call to say that I had been accepted. I had passed all the medical tests, and I was accepted, and they were offering me an assignment in Lesotho in Southern Africa. The Peace Corps actively recruits older Americans because it recognizes the value of their acquired wisdom and experience. Returning volunteers are especially prized. In talking over our experience with India, we both figured that we could We'd like to do this when we were a little bit more mature and had more experience. Right after they retired, the Muellers began their second two-year tour with the Peace Corps, this time in the Solomon Islands. We learned so much, and we felt that we had taken more than we had given. And, and as we got our skills, we thought, well, we could go and, and make more of a contribution so that they would get more than we got. In Zulu, we call those oranges Ama Olinche. Ama Olinche. Oranges, yes. After being accepted, volunteers enter a three month training program. They learn the language, customs, and skills that they will need in their service. For the Muellers, the coursework, combined with their previous Peace Corps service and life experiences, prepared them to create their own aid projects. In the Solomon Islands, um, together we 
built a preschool. It was something that we wanted to do because these children in the area had no schooling at all. Only the, only the ones who had money could go and that was a very high paid school. We had a lot more experience that we could share with people and I think uh, we were able to contribute more to the, the project we were in and to actual some progress in, in somebody's lives. Many older volunteers discover that age can also be an asset in dealing with people of a traditional culture. Well, I think um, one of the uh, first training sessions we had in Peace Corps was, I remember the trainer saying that in the Basutu culture, the elderly were revered. In the culture in the Solomon Islands, we were able to do a lot more, I think, and uh, just saying something, people listen to you because you were an older person. While the world has changed a great deal since the Peace Corps was founded, life in the countries where volunteers serve is often as rugged as it ever was. You've got to be willing to um, give up some of your luxuries at home. Some of the things that, like water, are more difficult to do without when, when you're older, just a psychological thing. I was not at all phased by living for two years without any running water or without electricity. Truthfully, it didn't bother me a bit. Volunteers usually adjust well to the challenges presented to them, from the rigors of training, to living with host families, to making do with modest allowances, to working with people of different ages and cultures. In fact, the difficulties tend to bring volunteers together. One of the concerns about being an older volunteer was how was I going to relate to my other volunteers. I was a whole two generations almost removed from a recent um, college graduate. There was a wide variety of, of ages in, in our groups and uh, we ended up being the same. Uh, most of them, starting with newly graduated from, from college to senior seniors. You all do the same training and work together and, and it's really nice to see the interchanges and exchanges between the young people and the older people because everyone has something something to learn. And the interaction was quite open and uh, there was a lot of mutual respect for each other's skills and backgrounds. I'm still in touch with quite a few of the younger folks that I was with in Peace Corps, and I, I find that very rewarding. The spirit of peace and compassion that inspired the Peace Corps is still alive today, and the Corps' volunteers still get the same rare opportunity to put their ideals into practice while serving their country and the world. We just felt we weren't ready to ret retire, retire. We wanted, you know, we still had some, we felt like we had more to contribute. But Peace Corps is an excellent organization to do your volunteer work in. They have a good support system. And it's um, something I think if you're even vaguely interested in, look into it and uh, see if maybe you have a fit there. There was a great deal of self-satisfaction and knowing that, that you were doing something and that, that what you were doing, people, people appreciate it. It's a good feeling. I don't know what, what to say about that. Uh, when you, you want to do something and you feel you're needed to do it, then I think it's a confirmation. I'm hopeful that it will be a source of uh, satisfaction to Americans and a uh, contribution to uh, world peace. Joining us now to talk about the Peace Corps work is Dr. Jody Olson, Deputy Director of the Peace Corps, and she served as a Peace Corps volunteer in Tunisia. She holds a PhD in education from the University of Maryland's College of Education. Welcome to the Daily Apple. Thank you so much. So I understand that the Peace Corps volunteers are at a 30-year high, is that correct? Yes, we are uh, almost 7,800 volunteers in over 70 countries, and this is the highest number in 30 years, and I think it shows how successful Peace Corps is and the need and the interest that countries have to have Americans serving. Why do you think Americans are so eager to serve, though? 
it's at this, this point. Whole, it's this whole spirit of service and this wanting to serve. And we have found actually in the last five years that our applications have gone up because people want to see, you know, instead of the headlines, what is it really in terms of people to people in all the countries in which we're serving. How fascinating that older adults can volunteer in such a way. One doesn't think of that naturally, that a person in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. I think I read that the oldest person is 84, is that yes, correct? Yes, right, 84 years old. And 6% of that 7,800 volunteers are 50 years and older. And what we find them saying as they join is, you know, children are raised, they're out the door, or we're just getting ready to retire. And it's, you know, there's more to life. There's some way we want to give back. And I think what I hear most is we want to give something back for all of the goodness that we've had up until this point. And that number jumped with just recently, right, from 1% or we're over 55 to 6% we're over. In the early years of Peace Corps, it was less than 1%. Isn't that amazing? We're over 50. And so the number and the interest in the percentage, and as we saw... Older persons play a wonderful role with the younger volunteers. Intergenerational. As, intergenerational, as well as the respect they have in the communities. So you were in Tunisia. Right. What are some other areas where volunteers are today? Volunteers are throughout Central America. We're in about five Latin American countries, Asia, the Central and Eastern Europe, Caucasus, Central Asia, Ukraine is actually our biggest program, as well as almost all of Sub-Sahara Africa and the Pacific. What are the physical fitness requirements um, for a volunteer? The medical is important because we all need to be relatively healthy and stable. But Peace Corps offers medical support for all Peace Corps volunteers. We have a medical office in every country. And so as a person is reasonably, reasonably healthy and, st and medically stable, we're there in terms of any medications or any other kind of medical support that they need. That's great information, but hold that thought for a second. We've got to take another break. Don't go away. We'll be back shortly to learn more from Dr. Jody Olson about the Peace Corps and the seniors who serve it. Do you know what country currently has the most Peace Corps volunteers working within it? A, China. B, South Africa. C, Guatemala. D, Ukraine. What country currently has the most Peace Corps volunteers working within it? D. Ukraine. According to official Peace Corps statistics, Ukraine has the highest number of volunteers. Additionally, compared to other countries where the Peace Corps operates, Ukraine has both a higher level of overall industrialization and a relatively stable political environment. We're back to continue our conversation about the Peace Corps with Dr. Jody Olson, the organization's deputy director. Before we left for a break, we were talking about medical care. Mm -hmm. So mature adults clearly might have some issues that they have to deal with while they're away. And it's a 27-month stay, is that correct? Yeah, 27 months, which is three months of training in country and then two years at the site. So what are some of the medical health care availabilities where they are? The, in part, depending on whatever medical support that older volunteers might need, they might be more eligible for some countries than others, but you know if they're stable high blood pressure or stable diabetes or you know other kinds of situations like that, we're there for the uh, older volunteer. So you don't automatically rule out someone that may have a chronic illness oh, no. just because of that. You try to figure out how where a good match would be for them. Yes, that's that's the whole goal, so that we can give them the support that they need. Now there are certain situations that we can't accommodate, but we do our best to accommodate almost anybody who. Who really wants to go. Are there any reasons why a senior might not be able to go besides a health care problem? Or? Well, I know sometimes seniors are saying, which I understand being a grandmother myself, that this time away from children and grandchildren and I'm going to miss the birthday. But now what we're finding is because you can put up blogs and you can send home photos and you can do emails and even make phone calls that the older volunteer is bringing his or her family but wait, it's to so the hard experience. to imagine that you don't have water but you have technology? Which is often true. And for example, sometimes a volunteer might have a cell phone but walk two hours to refresh it twice a week. Uh, and even without water, there is a cyber cafe that they can get to, let's say, once a week. So there are these opportunities to communicate. And sometimes the kids and grandkids come and visit the older volunteers while they're there. And sure. it's an extended family um, 
opportunity. I had the luxury of taking a trip around the world with my father last year, and we went to many, many third world countries. It was amazing. As we left each country, it seemed like there was an uproar. For instance, we were in Jordan yeah. a week before that happened. What about the safety, about the political climate, and, and the concerns, especially for a mature adult? Well, and the, obviously that's one of the co most common questions asked. Each volunteer going into a country and into that community begins by living with a host family. And so you enter the community as a family member, and then you stay in that community. And so that community is, in effect, taking care of you. And as you learn the language and you understand where to be and where not to be, you are as comfortable, if not more comfortable, often than you are here at home. It was interesting to see in the piece how there was a sense of camaraderie between yes. the volunteer. Do you get a lot of that, or is there sometimes resistance between the volunteer and those that they're trying to help? Every community where a volunteer serves has actually been visited by Peace Corps staff. And that question is, do you really want to volunteer? And then there's a counterpart, and there's a, a community conversation about accepting that volunteer. So volunteers go where they know that the communities are saying, this will be really fun to have somebody, and this is what we would like the volunteer to do, because we're there at their request. So the first question that came to mind for me when I was researching this is, there are definitely certain places I'd rather go than other places. That's true. Do you have a choice? Uh, not really. What we like people to do is to... But I know someone now in the organization, so maybe <laughs> yeah, I will. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Never works that it way. It doesn't work that way. Because you list your, uh, the things you've done and the degrees and the experience that you've got, and then we look at any kind of medical situation that might be there, and then what time you want to serve in the year that you want to go, and we try to put all that together. And I have had many volunteers say to me, how did Peace Corps know that this was the perfect country for me? Really? And what I realized is it almost doesn't matter because the experiences are so profound regardless of where they're sure. at. Sure. Now, from the expenses side, you cover the medical care, correct? We cover everything. Okay. We cover the transportation. We cover all the training. We give a living allowance. Now, ironically, the living allowance averages about $200 a month. But for most volunteers, they say, hey, that's plenty. We also put away about $250. $50 a month, which comes out to about $6,000 after two years. You get the a, transition back. The, the transition the back. Yeah, it's a readjustment allowance. You get about 45 days of vacation during that two year period. And the idea is that you don't need any money from any place else. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to live the way the community lives. And so, you know, if you're getting Social Security or other retirement, you just sort of keep it in the bank for when you come back because we're, we cover all the expenses. I, I was reading, reading an interesting article about a woman who was going to volunteer and she was saying, and I, th I just found it fascinating, that she was volunteering, she was telling her grandchild about yeah. it and her grandchild said, mommy, what happened? I mean, grandma, what will happen if something, you know, if you have an emergency, will you be able to come back? And I wonder, what happens? Like, what if an, a mature adult falls, for instance? Mm -hmm. Can they take some time off and then go back into the program? Well, we, in addition to that community that is your support system, we do have a very effective emergency system. And so if something happens at home and you need to get back immediately, we cover all of that. And if there's an emergency with you and it can't be taken care of right there, we cover you getting to the proper medical care or whatever care you need, and we can do that almost instantaneously. So clearly you've taken care of almost everything. What about the Peace Corps Encore? Program. The Peace Corps Encore program is a program that's being set up for return volunteers to the best I know. I might just note that it is not affiliated with oh, Peace Corps. Okay. It's a private uh, nonprofit organization that... For is, Peace Corps-holics? Yes, for Peace Corps-holics. <laughs> that's actually a really great term for it. But we have what we call the Crisis Corps. Okay. And the Crisis Corps is for return Peace Corps volunteers that can go overseas or, in the case of last year, even serve in the United States on emergency situations. And a third of all our Crisis Corps return volunteers are over the age of 50. Oh, my goodness, really? Yeah, and in fact, one that just recently was serving after Hurricane Katrina, Peter, who comes from Missouri, he was in the very first Peace Corps group that went to Tanganyika in 1961. And 45 years later, he volunteered and he served in Louisiana. And his whole community in Missouri was saying, go for it, Peter. What a great story. Where can people learn more about Peace Corps? The easiest place is to go online, peacecorps.gov. 
and we try to make it as user friendly and as happy and as complete as we can and just go and say I'm interested in Peace Corps and almost immediately you'll get either a call back or an email. Fantastic. Thanks so much for the information. Well, thank you.